Hello everyone, Yokai here from Yokai's Artificiary. Recently, I wanted to 3D print a cookie cutter of a custom design. I figured it should be easy enough to take an SVG file, make that into a 3D model, and print it. But it turns out this is not as easy as you might think, and there didn't seem to be any good tutorials online. If you're looking to do the same thing, I hope this helps you. I will be using Inkscape as my vector graphics editor, Blender for my 3D modeling, and Prusa Slicer but you should be able to use any program that is an analog of these. The first thing you will need is an SVG file. For this demonstration, I picked this free clip art of a cat I found online. I think this is a good example because it has an outline where you would want the cutter to go all the way through the dough, and also some details where I would want to make an impression but not cut the dough. Once you have your file open, I recommend changing the size of the canvas to 100 by 100 millimeters. I picked that because I think it's the largest I would reasonably want to make a cookie cutter. Setting the canvas size gives us a nice frame of reference. After a couple of tests, I found that for an oval shaped cutter, 100mm width is fine. With a round design like this one though, that is way too large, so I'm going to scale the image down to about a quarter the size of the canvas. Next we are going to take the paths and separate them into multiple layers for ease of use. I'm going to create two new layers one named outline, and one named details. Part of the reason I'm doing this is to remove unnecessary paths. This file I downloaded has the outline in it twice, which is not necessary. Also, if this were a more complex drawing that I was trying to isolate a portion of for the cookie cutter, I would want to get rid of the extra paths. Every path that exists in the SVG file we save will turn into an object in Blender so it's easier if you only have the paths you plan on turning into 3D objects in the final file. I'm going to copy this outline path and use paste in place to put it in my outline layer. Then I'll hide that layer for now. Next, select the face features and move them to the details layer, which we hide. If this were a drawing that I wanted to keep for possible modification later, I would make sure I had a backup saved with the original paths. For now though, I will just delete the originals since I don't need them. Let's turn our path back on and select it. All of our cutting paths need to be thin and uniform with no fill. Make sure the fill is turned off. Now we're going to change the color of the path to make things easier later. Then we set the stroke thickness. I'm going to go with 1mm thick, as I think that is thin enough to cut the dough, and thick enough to be reasonably sturdy. 1mm is pretty thin though, and it might be uncomfortable on your hands when pressing down on it. So we're going to duplicate this layer, then on the bottom copy of the layer I'm going to change the stroke th thickness to 4mm and change the color. Turning the upper layer back on, we can now see our two paths. Let's hide those for now and move on to the details. The details paths are not going to push all the way through the dough, so it's not as important that the lines be thin and uniform. This will let me keep the eyes as a filled in shape instead of just a stroke. The eyes in this art are a white circle on top of a black one. I want them to be a single piece, so I'm going to select each eye and do a boolean difference to make them a single shape. I'll change the color too. The eye shapes currently have no stroke setting. We need to make sure that they are explicitly set to have none, or it will be a problem later. Now for the nose and mouth. This is a single path with no fill, and I like how thick it is, so I'll leave the stroke where it is. Again, I'm going to change the colors. Then we duplicate the layer, and hide the upper layer. The comfort paths on the mouth are the same as we did on the outline. We'll change the stroke to 4mm and change the color. Over here on the eyes, we're using a filled in shape instead of a stroke, so we have a couple options. First, we could just leave them as is. They aren't thin layers, so they might not need to be thickened up for comfort. But if I wanted to do it anyway, you can select them and then go to the path menu and choose outset. I do this a couple times to get the size somewhere I like. Finally, I'm going to change the color on these as well. Now if we turn our layers back on, you can see what we've got so far. The next step is pretty simple. 
select everything, and go to the path menu, then choose stroke to path. This step is why we made sure the eyes had no stroke earlier. If they had a stroke, or if it was not defined, then they will be treated as having a stroke and do something weird. Since this already had no stroke, even though they were selected, the eyes were left alone. When you import into Blender, it seems to use the bottom left corner of the canvas as the origin, so let's move the image to roughly centered there. Finally, we save our file and switch over to Blender. This is an empty Blender file I've prepared. I've changed the units to millimeters so that it's on the same scale as both the SVG file and also my 3D printer. Now we import our SVG file. I'm going to separate my paths into a few different groups. This makes it easier for me to group and select the items I'm trying to access. With that done, let's do some extruding. Starting with our comfort shapes, I'm going to select them all, then go to Object Data Properties, and find the extrude box under Geometry. The extrusion using this method is in both directions, so whatever value you put in there will be doubled. On my first tests, I did not realize this and made a 20mm tall cookie cutter when I only intended them to be 10mm tall. 2mm is thick enough for our comfort part, so I'll set the extrusion to 1. Once you have that set, you can right click on the field and choose Copy to Selected to apply the same setting to all selected items. Now on our cutting path, the standard thickness of a sugar cookie is apparently supposed to be a quarter of an inch. That works out to about 6 millimeters. I'm going to make my cookie cutter 10 millimeters tall to give it a little space. So I set the extrude to 5. For the indention, I'm thinking pressing half the width of the cookie or less seems about right. Since my cookie cutter is 10 millimeters tall, I need to come down 6 millimeters in order to leave a 2 millimeter indention. So I'll select these and extrude 3, then copy to select it again. Depending on how thick you roll your cookies, you will want to play with this number to get the indentions set in a way that you like. Now it's time for alignment. If your design is symmetrical, you can put the Y parts at the bottom to save a step later. I'm going to assume your design is asymmetrical and lay out the cutter in the correct orientation. Turn all objects back on and switch to front view. Select all of the wide pieces and move them up to 10 millimeters. Then slide the cutting edge into place. Finally, let's move the indentation pieces if we take a look at the top and the bottom now, you can see what we are working with. There is a problem though. Our detail pieces aren't supported in any way. If we leave it like this, the details will fall out, so let's add some supports to keep things together. As you have seen already, I have been overlapping my objects. Generally speaking, this is a bad practice, but this model is super simple, and we aren't doing any of the things in 3D modeling and animation that would make this be a problem. Also, slicers are pretty good about dealing with overlapping volumes. So we are going to overlap some cubes for our supports. I'll add a cube and set its dimensions to something reasonable, using a 2mm thickness to match our comfort layer. Then we will move it into place over the eyes. I'll duplicate it once for the mouth, and then we'll add some vertical supports as well. Now we can join all of the objects together and edit the nodes to bring them into a good spot. All done. 
Last thing to do is save an STL file. Now we switch over to our slicer program and import the file. The final step is to flip this guy over so we can print without supports. Then we let our slicer do its job. And here you can see an example of the results. The larger one in this picture is 100 millimeters wide and the smaller one is 50 millimeters wide. Naturally, we're using a banana for scale. On these prints, I made the eyes out of two strokes instead of a filled shape, but it should work out to be about the same. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it helps. And if you're interested in following along on my other projects, you can find my Twitch link in the description.